7.30, NBC, USC at Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame favored by two and a half points, Dan. Let's go. Let's talk. Mm. You want to talk? <laughs> I would love to talk. Let's talk about this game. <sighs> we have seen something over the last three weeks that I have no idea why it is not being discussed more. Just out there in the college football ether, in Notre Dame circles, what have you. Yeah. 14 points for Notre Dame against Ohio State. 21 points against Duke. 20 points against Louisville. All the talk this offseason was about Sam Hartman. Mm. Missing link? Missing piece? Why doesn't it feel that way? He's got that caveman beard missing link, yeah. Why doesn't it feel that way? You want to talk about shrinkage? Let's Mm -hmm. talk about Jared Parker. And let's talk by extension about Marcus Freeman. Why are they easing into every game like they are easing into a cold bath? (laughs) Is Notre Dame, are they the rich man's Northwestern can only really perform in Ireland? Is that... Is that something that has occurred to you? <laughs> how dare you? How dare you come on this show and bring that in? They're the super rich man's Northwestern. How dare you? Okay, continue. Let's talk about significant shrinkage here. Okay. Let's talk about it. There is no excuse for any of this. There is no excuse in my mind for any of what we've seen on the offensive side of the ball. Because they were essentially better at the same game plan a year ago. Yeah. A lot of the same players. Worst quarterback. The line didn't suddenly get worse. It's all the same guys from that team. Tommy Reese part. calling the offense. Tommy Reese calling the offense. It feels like the line is completely out of sync with whatever plays they are calling. Completely out of sync. And you know what? I'm also going to make an assumption that it ain't Joe Rudolph's fault. Joe Rudolph? Joe Rudolph was partially the architect behind Jonathan Taylor running for like a gajillion yards in his time at Wisconsin. I don't think he's the reason. I don't think he's the reason. I think the reason is Jared Parker. Mm. I think he stinks as an offensive coordinator. Wow. He October does. 11th. The flag has been I planted. I think he stinks. Yeah. I did I did the independent podcast, great pod, new podcast with our friends Pete Sampson and Matt Fortuna. Not a hair in sight, right? <laughs> <laughs> on that podcast. Not Your a single on, strand. Your words on mine. No healthy follicle. Oh, we love them. Okay, continue. They're good guys. Yeah. I did, I, the reason I bring this up, I did it a couple weeks ago. It was after the Ohio State loss. And Matt had a really interesting question for me. And because this was after the 10 man debacle, you know, and he he was pretty fired up about it. Mm -hmm. His his point was he was a little surprised that people weren't in the Notre Dame world, weren't making more of it, that it was it was a close game. And the fact that they could have won sort of overshadowed the fact that it was a huge blunder that should at some point have repercussions. I I don't disagree with that. But the question was, what's it going to take to lose the fan base? And I said at that point in time, getting blown out to Ohio State, USC, or Clemson. That's something like that. Sure. Something like that is what I think it would take, one of those circumstances. Um, I think there's a chance Notre Dame gets blown out against USC. What? I think Are there's you a out chance. of your ever-loving mind? No. Continue. I think, I think there's a chance to get blown out against USC because we have seen play call if you look at what has happened over the last couple weeks through the lens of play calling and offensive organization yeah it makes a little bit more sense close game against ohio state with some better play calling on offense early for sure early perhaps that's a winnable game the game against duke you win but not really because of the play calling because of a fantastic singular effort in a clutch moment by sam hartman True. And then last week against Louisville, Whoa. again, this is this is an actual loss. And this is, I think, because the offense was dead set and determined to run the football and did not have a plan B when they couldn't. Okay. So now we enter a game here against USC where USC is going to score points. Notre Dame's got a good defense, but USC is going to score points. And Notre Dame enters this game in a similar situation where you would think they can run the ball against a team that struggles stopping it. However, just like the last three weeks, everybody knows it's coming. Even for a, for a moment in time against NC State, they knew it was coming and it didn't go anywhere. I am worried about the offense being telegraphed. I am worried about there not being a plan B. I am worried that in a broader sense, Marcus Freeman thought Jared Parker was the best guy to call this offense. I am worried that 
This is the guy he wanted all along, and despite the the Andy Ludwigs and Colin Kleins, whatever other names you want to bandy about. Yeah, you want Utah's offense right now, Ty? Is that I something was, you're interested in? At least the guy's got experience, man. Okay. At least he's got experience. I am worried that there is nobody else that they could find to run this thing other than Jared Parker. I don't think he's very good. I've got USC 38-20 to 20 lock of the week. Lock of the week. That's Have you I'm considered so, uh, Notre Dame? First of all, no better human for Notre Dame football than Mario Cristobal not kneeling to overshadow <laughs> the ten men on the field, right? <laughs> Send a, a, some Sherry's berries down to Coral Gables if you're Marcus <laughs> Freeman, right? Not uh, a sponsor. What's not a sponsor. A sponsor. It used so, to be. Yeah, yeah. If there's so, still a company. Could be. what's edible arrangements? Something thoughtful, right? Send it on over to yeah. <laughs> the Miami facility. <laughs> Thanks for that, guys. Nice little news dump. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So let's 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 do a hypothetical here, real quick. If Notre Dame has eleven men on the field in that final play against Ohio State, and they get that stop, a la Oklahoma against Texas, a big dramatic goal line stop and a huge leverage moment, they win that game, and they still look like they do against Duke. They still lose to Louisville, but they have that feather, you know, a top ten, what will end up being a top ten, top twelve win or whatever, wherever Ohio State would be ranked if they lost to Notre Dame. They have that feather. What's the spread in this game? Five and a half? Four? Something, right? I'm just saying the margin for this number is so razor thin. And I understand the emotions that Notre Dame has been playing with with all these close games. Not that Louisville ended up being all that close, but high atmosphere, electric atmosphere games. Notre Dame hasn't had that guppy right in the middle of this all. They haven't had to play a, uh, you know, a, a UMass or something like that. You love sort that of, term guppy. You've been going with that guppy. this year, haven't you? I, maybe. That sounds right. I like it. No, I like it. Continue. Okay. USC has been trying to lose games. <laughs> USC has been trying to lose. They, they tried to look more vulnerable than they ever should have against ASU, against Arizona. They go down 17 nothing. Colorado storms back in that second half. There's just something underlying about this USC team that's essentially hope Caleb Williams can drag us across the finish line for 60 straight minutes because that's what it takes. I think USC is masquerading as an 8-4 and four team that can win 10 to 11 games in the right scenario if Caleb Williams is able to consistently make incredible plays or make incredible plays when he needs to, like he did against Arizona late. USC doesn't have the defense. I don't think they have the top-tier receiving talent, not even in the conference, let alone the country, that they kind of did last year when they had Mario Williams and Jordan Addison. Uh, the offensive line this year has been keeping Caleb Williams under attack. So if you're going to tell me that if... Maybe the strongest thing Notre Dame has done this year is rush the passer and collapse pockets. Yes? No. They haven't been great against the run, as we saw some of those big run plays last year. Was it Jawar Jordan yep. for uh, for Louisville? But they have done... It's Howard Cross, the big the big dude in the middle? Yeah. No, look, they've they've had... The defense, by and large, has been pretty good. They, I so, feel like it is unfair to them because they have not gotten as much help as they should have from the offense, frankly. they, they The offense is... A one-trick pony. They do not have a plan B, and USC knows it. Sure. They know I, it. Okay. So I just think USC is a one-butt team. They won, but right? That's, okay. that's who USC. Now they're going on the road. I still think the atmosphere is going to be very good. I still think the depth of your emotions, the depths of Notre Dame fan emotions is always going to be more dramatic than it needs to be. It's same for me with Oregon, same for my Oregon friends, whatever. Like, it's never as bad as you think it is. It's never as good as you think it might be able to be, right? Notre Dame was never going to go to the playoff this year. So Agreed. if Notre Dame is merely a 9-3 and three type team, some of the good, some of the bad of 9-3, and three, and they're hosting USC, and they get the USC defense, and the USC defense might be the cure for an overrated run game. You just watch. You watch. I'm you're just gonna see, you're going to you, see why you're wrong this weekend. You, you just love your road dogs for some weird reason. I don't I, think Notre Dame's going to look great on offense, but you give me Sam Hartman, you give me good tight ends, you give me the best of Audric Estime, I think they can win this game. Audric so Estime no, has like two yards of carry his last three games. Hasn't played the USC front. <laughs> right? Okay. All Louisville's right. Louisville's kind of right. feisty up front. Duke's coached by Mike Elko. Ohio State has NFL talent up front. USC is on there. No. Give me Notre Dame here, 23-17. to 17. Oh, my God. I think they hold what down the USC sucker. offense, too. You're a sucker for pageantry is what you are. 
you just you, you, <laughs> why do you like this USC team on the road in the tough like that's it's, it's kind of dumb. But continue. 